You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a new Let's Play series on Kingsguard. This game has some incredibly detailed art and CG, and I just had a lot of you were requesting it from me. I looked into it. Uh, yeah, this looks like definitely like something we can cover on the channel. Um, uh, I'm not sure how much adult content there is in this, but we'll see. Anyway, y'all, let's just jump right in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. What is my name again? Um, Reg, yeah, Conswald, I don't know, um, it's Jake, <laughs> Jake. Jake, Jake Euler Yassin, first of his name. <laughs> Is this right? Yes, Jake Lerla. People are just gonna be calling me Jake. That's funny. 21, wow, 2120. The fourth recorded era of Torvier. Today was supposed to be one of joy and celebration, yet my hand shakes as I hold this quill. A man such as I, so devoted to the gods, fearing for the future. Suppose I'm only human after all. Whatever happened to my faith, or that I become so skeptical? The two above stopped a never-ending war that would have left Torver in an infertile wasteland of corpses and ruins. We would have destroyed ourselves, no one left. Not men or beastmen. They gave us salvation from torment and eternal damnation. Now here we are, hundreds of years later, and not one war or conflict between nations since. My fears are unfounded. I should be hopeful, and yet, Jake, and yet, Jake. The queen had given birth to an heir, a baby boy, a prince. It's been so long since I first heard that name that I had nearly forgotten. While well, the queen cradles him in her arms with a joyous smile, the king forces a grin with mournful eyes. Perhaps he too has seen a glimpse of the trials what his own child must face. The fated day now approaches. It could be weeks, months, or years. So I pray for the gods to return, if only for one day. Hmm. What? <laughs> oh, I'll see him. Your eyes slowly cracked open to all the rambunctious cheering. A cacophony of clapping, stomping feet, and shouts of both joy and anger rumbled through your entire body. It should have been impossible to get any rest with all the noise, but you somehow managed to fall asleep regardless. Land of Torbear. Wow, wow. The Great Wall. Huh. Land of Torbear. Torbear is a large island that has been at peace for the past few hundred years. Other than a single trip by a veteran captain hundreds of years ago, no known individual has ever returned from the journey to explore what is believed to be the Outer Lands. Three great nations have survived amidst the turmoil that plagued this land since antiquity. Yasan is a nation of progress and is the forefront of innovation. It always, it's always looking, for, looking toward the future and ways to improve the lives of its citizens. Its lands are filled with mountains, crags, caves, forests, and grasslands. Its lands are a treasure trove for ores and stone. Brahm is a nation of antiquity and religion. Its citizens hold great value in time-honored traditions and the secrets of the past. One second, y'all. Wide open fields of greens and golds and dense forests cover the land. <clears throat> its soil is rich and perfect for farming. Farharan is a nation of freedom and chaos. Its citizens live each day as though it were the last in this harsh land. The most varied of the three nations. Deserts, swamps, thick rainforests, deep valleys, and icy mountain ranges. Oh my god, I've heard this music so much, so much before. Mountain ranges are left untamed and unexplored for many adventurers who would dare explore its vast expanse. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll just do two per episode. Humans aren't the only population who inhabit the land of Torver. It is filled with animals that roam the land and birds that soar through the air. Tiny insects that burrow underground and in trees, and creatures of the sea, many of which are to be discovered. But one thing that has always been a, been a bit of a mystery were beastmen. Just who are they? Philosophers, biologists, and scientists through the years have scratched their heads at the mystery of these people. They have the same physiology as humans, that they exhibit the same traits as animals. Many have speculated that beastmen are humans who long ago dabbled in black magic, becoming the beings they are today. But others believe that it is we, humans, who came from them. Or perhaps it, is it was animals who somehow evolved into them. Nevertheless, they are here to stay. The mystery of who beastmen really are may never be solved, but there is one thing known for sure. That their presence in recorded history extends just as far back as humans. Alright. 
It should have been impossible to get any rest with all that noise, but she somehow managed to fall asleep regardless. Perhaps it wasn't so incredulous to believe, though. The past few weeks had left you exhausted with all the preparations for the upcoming coronation. The king, the kingdom's most important and revered event in over a decade. Even the most expensive and luxurious bed couldn't keep you from tossing and turning in the middle of the night. You stifled a yawn and brought up an arm to shield your eyes from the bright sun. It found your arms baked to a golden hue. An arena attendee next to you shouted especially loudly into your ear. Get him! Get him! Ha ha! Yeah! You see that? The man elbowed you roughly, further stirring you from your dreamlike haze. Rubbing your tired eyes, you squinted down from atop the stands of the arena at the fighting below. In the midst of your midday dream, you seem to have missed the most important part of the fight. Several bruised gladiators covered in blood, spit, and dirt were being, being hauled off the grounds, moaning in pain as they retreated. They'll be talking about that for a few weeks! Ha-ha! Um, what happened? What? You were sleeping? Let's just say I haven't been having the best, night, best of nights lately. Ah, bad hangover for a good drink from a good drinker. Did a woman keep you up all night? I wish it was something as pleasant as that. You didn't have the courage to tell the man that you were actually so tired from sneaking out of home so early in the morning, before even the birds started chirping the light of the, to the light of the sun. That wasn't because your father had a strict curfew or anything for you. Well, he did, but anyone would forbid their only son, and a prince at that, from leaving home and wandering the dangerous city streets without a bodyguard. Well, try not to miss a th anything or else, so you'll be regretting it for the rest of your life. He nodded and took his advice to heart. There's plenty of time to rest when you were dead, and besides, you needed to stay awake for reasons other than on the fight below. At the other end of the Colosseum, you noticed a group of knights enter and spread out, getting in the way of many spectators. They were clearly searching for someone as they roamed around, removing the hoods from everyone and eyeing their faces closely. Father certainly is persistent, isn't he? Though you were concerned, it would take them ages to search everyone in the crowd, especially when anything exciting happened below and everyone stood up in cheers. You brought your cloak up and covered your face while keeping a watchful eye on the knights. Getting up and leaving would only make you look more suspicious and attract their attention. <clears throat> and besides, there were likely tens of no, maybe even so far as a hundred guards roaming the streets of the city searching for you all at your father's behest. Once they get close enough, you, once they get close enough, you would take off. But for now, you just wanted to savor the freedom you had to enjoy the fights. Take him down! That's right! Right there! Despite the inspection, you still lost inhibitions and became swept up in the excitement with the crowd. The fight was quickly over, and the losing gladiators were dragged off the floor of the arena while the winners rose their hands in the air to the cheering and booing crowd. The announcer stepped up to his podium and drew in a deep breath to speak of his out of his bullhorn. Wonderful! Such an absolutely wonderful performance from our gladiators, and there is so much more to come! I need not remind those that have won this match that glory and gold go to those who make it to the end of this arduous competition. Let us take a moment to offer our prayers once again to the god and goddess for their blessings. The man's voice boomed through the stadium, quieting down the crowd, but you could tell that the people were getting antsy. They wanted more action. They wanted more violence. They came here for entertainment, and they didn't want it to stop. The announcer was quick to catch on, though, and he kept his prayer short to, mo to move right back into the event. Now then, let us announce our next fighters. Hailing from the town of Lyne is Arborn the Slick. A lithe man in leather armor stepped forth with pride, twirling a short sword in each hand with deft grace. Despite his small stature, he was hard to miss due to the colorful cloth wrapped around his torso. He may be five foot two and thin as a razor, but don't let his size fool you. He's quick on his feet and has been the folly of many confident fighters. But how will he fare against our other competitors? The crowd turned towards the rising of the metal gate as another man walked onto the field from the opposite end of the stadium. He was covered from head to toe in full metal armor, polished so brightly that the sun bounced off of it from all, all angles nearly blinding you. Yes, we have a treat for you today, folks. Following in the footsteps of his father, he holds skills unparalleled in the kingdom and aims to become head of the house one day. It is the illustrious noble knight of House Prane, Magnus the White. The knight strutted forward with confidence and, dig and dignity befit, of one, befit one of nobility. He waved towards a cluster of women in the crowd and they screamed his name. He walks with an air, he walks with an air of confidence rarely seen in this day and age. If y'all know what that is from, then y'all watching some of the same YouTube channels that I am. Will this be another badge of honor on his numerous and growing list of achievements? Oh man. Wow, what a oh my god, that is some incredible art. He's a rhino! Look at that ass! Your eyes quickly darted between the two fighters, but became distracted when you spotted one last combatant entering the ring from an entrance on the arena right below you. 
All you saw was this gray, broad rampart of a back, covered in muscles and littered with scars. Thick brown hair bounced with his heavy gait, and he stopped by the two with a menacing cross-armed pose. He wore leather armor that did little more than lightly cover his body, showing off his impressive stature and rippling muscles. If he was trying to be intimidating, it was clearly working by the way the other two fighters took a half-step back, though if he were to take one... Though if he were to take but one hit, he'd be out. Still, you know exactly how this fight would turn out. You had seen it so many times before. In fact, he was one of the reasons you wanted to sneak out of the castle in the first place. His fight was one you didn't want to miss. And last but not least, we have our final contestant. He comes all the way from Farharan, a hulking brute of a beast man who has seen many battles here in the Colosseum. Can you feel the ground rumble as he walks, the weight in the air as he stares you in the eye? It's one, the only, Ramos! Butcher of the Colosseum! Oh my god. The rhino stamped his foot on the ground, raised his hands into the air, and belted out a guttural roar that was just as loud as the crowd. The crowd went wild, raising their voices and cheering even more than when they cheered the other two combatants combined. The man started around the man started around the stands, taking money for bets on who would win the fight. While he would have liked to join in, the fact that the knights were still roaming around meant that you had to remain as quiet and innocuous as possible. And besides, there was no need to. Being a prince meant that money was never an issue for you, so the heart-pounding risk, the whole allure of being on the edge of winning or losing it, losing it all just wasn't there. Who, what is this? Who is this beast and why is he here? Shimmering noble knight lifted his face guard to speak to the announcer. His voice was shaky and befit someone who called themselves a knight. He seemed to have lost all his confidence. I demand an answer! I was told that this was the last match and was to be a one-on-one -on -one fight of grace and honor. Is that what you were told? Yes! I demand to speak to the organizer and ask that this match be changed. Oh god, he's, he's not a Karen, he's a Kevin. He's a Kevin! I'm afraid that will not do. This match has already begun and you have taken to the battlefield. Think of this as an opportunity to gain both greatness and prestige. Should you succeed in taking down the pride of the Colosseum itself, then there is nothing left to fear. Knight looked back at Ramos and you could see the fear in his eyes. Very well. He's but a beast after all, and I shall tame him as such. Knight slammed down his face guard and achieved the sword and stood at the ready. Now then, let the battle begin. Blow after blow, the two knights could only focus on defense as they were smacked to the ground mercilessly by Ramos. They were more akin to flies than fighters as they scurried around the battlefield, avoiding being knocked out by the enormous beast man. As much as you wanted to focus on the fight, you still had to keep one eye on the knights who still hadn't given up on their search. Some woman had even gotten out of her seat and was smacking one of the knights away with her shoe for tearing apart her shawl. Oh, and that has got to hurt. I'm afraid Sir Magnus the White is going to be Sir Magnus the Black and Blue in the morning. The dust was already settling as you turned your attention back on the fight below. It appeared that the heavy-set beastman had finally caught that shining knight. Magnus was lying face down with Ramos' entire body pressed atop him, pinning him to the ground. His once shiny armor was heavily dented, marked up with scratches and covered in dirt. He may be big, but don't let his size fool you. Let this be a lesson to never turn your back to a charging rhino. Ramos had the strength of a thousand men. He was as tall as a great oak and as wide as a great wall, or so the rumors went. But even if they were all just spun myths, beast men were the beast men were not going were not beings to be trifled with, especially one of Ramos' size and stature. The audience waited to see if Magnus could escape from such a fate, but when he showed no signs of movement, it was clear that this was all over for him. His zealous fans wailed in distress, with makeup mudding their faces over the fall of their handsome and noble knight. They spat in disgust and called the rhino a cheater, among other colorful insults geared towards the beast men. He simply smiled. It was always a joy to see some stuck-up nobles getting knocked down a few pegs, especially those from House Prain, who had a well-known history of hating beastmen. Oh, but would you look at that? This fight isn't over yet! The other gladiator saw this as a perfect chance to strike. While the rhino was still hunched over the fallen Magnus, he charged forwards and leapt into the air with both blades poised. Watch out! You wanted to cover your eyes, but you saw only a sly grin spread across the beastman's face. Harborn was like, GAH! Ramos shot out his leg with a well-timed kick from behind. From behind and threw his opponent's his threw his assailant off balance. The blades narrowly grazed the rhino as he whipped around and finished his opponent off with a solid punch to the gut. Arborn went sliding backwards before tripping over his feet and rolling into the dirt to a stop. When the dust had settled, he was clutching his stomach, coughing and groaning in terrible agony. What a blow from Ramos! One hit and he's down. Ramos cracked his head left to right and then strutted forth to the fallen gladiator, kicking aside the blades in his wake. 
Is this it for Arborn? Will he get up? Hmm. I didn't try to get back up, but after that last punch, it was easy to see that he was nearly ready to pass out. He started to crawl away as Remus approached him, and the crowd's cheers grew into bitter shouts. They wanted more of a spectacle than the one shown, and frankly, you had to agree. It was clear to see that this fight was over. Just as Remus was about to begin the fight anew, the man removed one, one hand from his abdomen and slowly raised it above his head. That's it! Arborn has had enough, folks! Remus scoffed and spat to the side of the noise before turning to the cow, proud and raising his arms in a triumphant roar. Despite the lackluster fight, the crowd still went wild with excitement. Always the blowhard, I see. The bench groaned as the man beside you shifted in his seat. His gruff, apathetic voice took you a bit by surprise as you first thought that the seat he was in was empty. Though you didn't turn your head, he appeared to be a very large man with armor that rattled as he moved with tufts of fur protruding out between the cracks, hinting that he could be a beast man. At the corner of your eye, he appeared to be quite muscular, with biceps easily the size of your thighs. A long, slender tail flickered near his feet, occasionally brush brushing against your legs, confirming to you that he was a beast man. Someone like him, though, someone like him, though, filling the seat should have alerted you, but then again, your attention was already pulled in between the fights. The roaring crowd and those meddlesome knights sniffing around. Speaking of those knights, though, the hairs on the back of your neck rose on end as you locked eyes with one of them. You were ready to flee, but rather than continuing his approach, he instead stopped and stared for several months before turning to leave the stadium. As he left, he took the other knights with him. It almost appeared as though they recognized you, but why would they suddenly just leave? You couldn't imagine Father giving them the order to just find you and not carry you back home kicking and screaming. Perhaps they were searching for someone else entirely. Still, it was strange. You know, too much bravado could lead to your downfall. Huh? It appeared that the man to your left was talking about the true display Ramos was presenting from below. With Magnus's helmet in hand, he pretended to slam it, again, slam it against his groin multiple times in a perverse way. He couldn't help chuckling, though. A little bit of pride never hurt anyone. Hmm. I suppose you might be right about that. Still, that's quite a barbaric display, even for him. When the rhino was finished with his posting, he tossed the helmet aside and strode off the grounds. Alright, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause it right here. Ah, I'm loving this so far. It's so cool. Love the art. It's incredible. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and the notification bell. Just thanks for tipping the can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye